Welcome to the Master Stones Podcast, where we talk with jewelry retailers from across the country about the challenges of running their business and how they succeed. I'm your host, Nick Gurney. Well, everybody, we're here today with Cody Miller of Allen Miller Jewelers. Um, we're going to have him on the podcast. He can talk to us a little bit about what he is doing at his store to differentiate himself um, and to help other retailers understand what they can do um, to improve their stores. Uh, as always, we're here to learn together. And so we're really excited to have you, Cody. We appreciate you coming on. Happy to be here. Great. Um, so I'm really curious. One of, the, one of the questions I really like to ask is, uh, first off, how you got started in the industry? Um, I know there's some history with your store, um, but for, for those who don't know, those who are listening, uh, tell us a little bit about how you got started and then maybe a little bit of the background on your shop. Great. Yeah. Um, so I got started in the jewelry industry pr uh, probably when I was about five years old, uh, to be honest. Um, but I really didn't get into it until about my sophomore year, junior year of college. Um, my senior year of college, I did an internship at a uh, at another jeweler, uh, not too far away from my uh, my college. Um, and yeah, it started there. Um, my dad came up to me after uh, at graduation, actually, after I handed him my uh, my degree. I said, "Dad, here's your receipt." He said, <laughs> he just laughed, said thank you, and said, "Hey, I if you're interested, I have a job waiting for you." Um, I said, yeah, dad, that's great. He said, I want you to try it out for a couple of years. If you like it, great. If not, I don't want you there. That's the most fair offer anybody's ever given me. And I've, I've been there ever since. That was, wow. uh, 2009. Wow. So yeah, that that's fantastic. It's actually something we see all the time, right? In the industry, uh, maybe, maybe not quite, quite, you know, they're not all the same, but, um, something we do see often is, is that these are generational stores, right? Yeah. Um, and, and that's, that's really something special. I think that, that we have in this industry is that there is so much family involvement, right. And there's so much history with these stores. Um, it's less transactional, right. When, when, a, when a store continues on its path from one generation to another, um, do you feel like that's helped the, the brand at Allen Miller's? Do you, how, how has that affected you uniquely, I guess, at the store? Oh, absolutely. Um, we, we are branded as a family store. We don't carry the big brands, um, uh, Takori, uh, Hearts on Fire. Uh, now we used to, but it was beneficial for us to not be as heavily uh, name branded. Sure. Um, so the the to your point on the multi generational, um, I'm second generation. My dad started the industry started in the industry in 1969 uh, when he was 14 years old. Wow. Um, yeah, uh, just a little store down in East Toledo, um, uh, Martin Jewelers. He uh, started off as their gopher. He would go there after school, uh, take the city bus to take the repairs downtown. Um, if it was a rush job, the uh, Mr. Martin would go ahead and give him a couple bucks for a taxi, and uh, he'd wait till the job was done, um, then get back to the store immediately. Um, sold his first engagement ring at 15 and uh, he's he went off running wow wow that's fantastic um i i love the i love the history too because um yeah you might only be second generation but but your dad has been doing it so long that it might yeah. even feel like third right at this point um the yeah. that he learned at such a young <laughs> age that's that is really fantastic yeah um so you've you've been involved with the store i guess since about 2009 Yes. Um, what, I mean, it's gotta be a tricky dynamic, right? Um, and I'm sure that there's lots of stores that, that might be in a similar situation, right? Where they, they are transitioning to the next generation. What, what are some things that you've learned or what are things that have worked well as you've done that? Um, communication, communication is key. Um, do I agree with my dad on everything? No. <laughs> sure. <laughs> what, son, what son and father uh, combo agrees on everything? Um, it's constructive uh, disagreement, constructive criticism, um, and just just being being real, being honest with each other. Um, hey, I, I really like the way you're doing this. Or, you know, you probably could have handled that better. Mm -hmm. What can we do to improve? Mm -hmm. um, those are things that, that I 
communicate with my dad on. And, uh, you know, sometimes it takes, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it takes a few conversations. Sure. Um, but I, I think that's a common issue amongst um, uh, smaller family owned independent jewelers. Yep. Yeah, I mean, what what do they say, right? The, fir- the first rule of business is not to go into business with your family. But I think that our industry <laughs> proves that's not the case. 100%. Um, and, and so, yeah, that, that's awesome to hear. And, and I think that when you, you have the same goals, right, and, and you understand yeah. that, like, we, we are on the same team here. We're trying, to, we're, we're trying to make the business succeed. We might have different approaches. We might have different opinions. But at the end of the day, we have the same goals. Um, right. So, yeah, that sounds really, really cool. Um, okay. Now this is a question I've got, uh, for you that, that, uh, is, is a little bit different one. So being so involved with jewelry, assumingly from a small age, because your dad's involved in the store and everything, but not actually taking like a full step in, um, until later in life, until you were in college, what, what are some things that first surprised you when, when you got started? Like when, when you started coming to the shop every single day and all that type of stuff, what, what are the things that surprised you the most? Do you think? You know, that's a great question. Um, if I were to elaborate on it, I, I would say probably small things, little things matter. Um, things such as uh, fingerprints on cases, fingerprints mm-hmm. on the jewelry, um, things like that. Those those mean something. Um, the cases are one of the first things people see. They don't see the jewelry. Mm-hmm. They're looking through the case to see the jewelry. If the cases are mm-hmm. dirty and the jewelry's dirty, well, these people don't care. The little things matter. Just take an extra minute, yeah. take polishing uh, a little selvet cloth, clean the jewelry, clean the case. It doesn't take that long, um, and it goes a long way. Yeah, what, yeah one, one shot at a first impression, right? 100%. You get one chance yeah. at a first impression and make it make it what you need it to be. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I admittedly don't know, you know, a lot about your store, what, what you do differently. Um, are, are there are there certain differentiating factors that you have? I mean, of course, watching the uh, cleaning the cases often, the jewelry often, making sure that it looks good. I mean, I, we hope most people are trying to do those things, but the fact is yeah. they're not. Um, right. <laughs> what, are, what are other things that make your, your store uh, unique? What are, what are things that, that people come to your store for that they might not go to others? We're a very promotion driven store. Um, we, we're always looking for that next promotion, the next, uh, the next big thing. Um, currently right now we're working on a, a deal with, uh, Traeger grills, um, where you spend, um, X number of dollars and you get a grill. Um, people wow. have done similar things in the past. Um, if, and it's, it's worked out well. I think uh, I think this one's going to be a hit. Um, who doesn't love the grill, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's a. <laughs> I love Traeger grills. They're they're actually local yeah. to us as well. Oh, so that's great. a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, that's a really cool promotion because uh, it is interesting. Um, you know, I've seen shops give give promotions before and stuff, but you know, when you're going to buy an engagement ring, you're going to spend a lot of money. Um, you know, to, to get something like that out of it, that's awesome. Yeah, why not get something for you too? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, um, another thing we've done, we've teamed up with a uh, um, one of the local restaurants, the Real Seafood Company. Uh, they do a great job. They're, uh, uh, I think they're a regional restaurant, mm-hmm. um, but it's very, um, it's it's a little more upscale. Um, mm-hmm. And one thing we've done, we've we buy the the gift cards at a discount Mm -hmm. and we're able to give the customer a $50 gift card for a purchase over, you know, you know, a couple grand. Um, sure that, you know, he's able to take his, uh, his loved one out to dinner, um, and, uh, present her with a beautiful piece of jewelry. Yeah. So the date nights on us, right? We we take care of the date night, you know, um, you don't have to worry about all the extra steps. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Say, this is this is a gift from uh, from me to you, saying uh-huh. thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're, you're crafting experiences, right? Um, more so than than anything else, uh, because yeah. you could sell just an item, but when you sell an item and you include a grill, you sell an item, you include a a, a gift certificate to a nice dinner. Um, now now it's an experience, right? Right. Um, 
So that that's really cool. And, and how have your customers responded? Do they, do they like seeing this stuff? They oh, they love getting free things. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> they love getting. Who doesn't love getting free things, right? Uh huh. Um, yeah, it's it's you're you're absolutely right. You hit it right on the button. It is all experience driven, and I think sometimes people forget about that. Mm-hmm. Um, people in our industry, we you know we we sometimes focus on the things that don't. I don't want to say don't necessarily matter, but I think if we if we start to focus on uh, more of that experience, that's what this new uh, new generation that's buying engagement rings. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for that experience. Can anybody click online and say, "Hey, yeah, I just I just bought my engagement ring"? Sure, they can. Uh-huh. But anybody can do that. Anybody can sit yeah. on their couch at home and and click a button. Uh-huh. But for something special like that, you really want to take the time to go into a brick and mortar store, a local independent store, mm-hmm. a local jeweler, and 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 have that experience. Sit down with somebody and and learn something. Mm-hmm. Um, it's that educational factor. It's the experience. It's 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 the lights. It's the shining from the diamonds. It's everything. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. That that's really fantastic. Um, and, and, you know, you, you touch on a point there that I think is an important one. Uh, e-commerce, there's, it's, it's an, you know, it's a newer trend. It's been around. It's, it's been around in other industries longer than it's been around in jewelry. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's trying to make its way in. Uh, do you feel like there's a place for e-commerce and jewelry? I mean, I think we'd both agree right there, that scenario, it wouldn't make sense. You know, an engagement ring, that's a very personalized experience. Um, but, but do you feel like there's a place for it? For certain things, yes. Um, there's always going to be some sort of e-commerce route. Um, and I, I think the pandemic taught us something, that there is a place for it. Um, that's mm-hmm. how some stores uh, survived. Um, mm-hmm. But as far as engagement rings, I really don't recommend that. <laughs> there's there's just way, way too many factors. Um, you know, the the the... I, I guess I can say the name, the, the Blue Niles, the um, um, Ritanis, you know, you, you can you can go design a ring, but uh, without seeing it, without feeling it, without having that experience, what are you what are you really buying? Uh-huh. Do you know you're going to get that GSI one uh-huh. or the DVVS two? You don't. You don't know what you're looking at. The general consumer doesn't know exactly what they're looking at. Uh-huh. If you come into the store, us as jewelers, we're able to show you the difference between the, the VS stones and the SI stones and the I1s. Uh, and we have fun doing it. That's the thing. We enjoy doing yeah. what we do. We're very, very fortunate in our industry. Um, we're not out in the sun. We're, we're sitting in the AC, <laughs> you know? Yep, yep. Yeah, that's true. And, and even if you do take the picture, right, let's, let's say you do bring the picture in, right? And you got the, you know, I'm, I'm looking at buying this ring online. Even a jeweler couldn't tell if it is what they're claiming it to be. You know, exactly. uh, you're, you're not sure what you're getting in the box when it comes in the mail. Exactly. Um, with something as special and as important as a diamond, uh, it is important to look at it and to see it in person, to compare it to the one next to it, right? Um, and to right. understand exactly what is different about your stone versus somebody else's. Um, so yeah, that, that's fantastic. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, um, you, you touched on another point uh, that I want to that I want to talk about as a topic because we can't seem to av- avoid it at all. Um, but you you mentioned the pandemic and how it had an effect on the industry. Yeah, what what have you noticed changing in shopping behavior of customers in the past few years? Um, have you noticed anything specific changing, or their attitudes or reactions to certain things changing? Um. It's a great question. Um, when the pandemic hit, we were closed for seven weeks. Um, seven weeks. Uh, I, I'm not. I'll be the first to admit I'm not adept at home projects. I got pretty darn good at them. Um, <laughs> I learned. <laughs> not saying I'm I'm great or anything, but uh, I did learn how to cut baseboards and shoe molding and and all that fun uh-huh. stuff and. And I've done a couple other rooms since then. Um, as far as uh, uh, buying habits, once we got back into the store, I did notice that p- 
people were buying. People were spending that money. Um, was it attributed to the stimulus checks? Was it attributed to uh, some other factors? Maybe. I think uh, the pandemic really gave us a, uh, um, a different outlook in the sense that it, it, there's a lot of people that lost their lives in the pandemic, right? We're not here forever. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's treat the ones that are here now um, with something nice, something that's meaningful, something that's special. Uh, and I, I think that really um, that really had some um, some impact on our on our industry. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're close for seven weeks back to the pandemic. Um, close for seven weeks, and uh, when people got back, we weren't sure what was going to happen. Um, so. Again, I mentioned before, we're a promotion-driven store. Uh, we put out a big discount. We put off um, um, just some of our older inventory half off. Uh-huh. And uh, the response was incredible. Um, ultimately, year-end, we had our best year ever. Wow. Um, during the, Right after the pandemic. The year after that, we weren't sure what was going to happen. So we just kept doing the promotions and promotions and promotions. Oh that next year was our best year ever. Wow. It it topped the year before. So um, where's it going to go this year? It's anybody's guess, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Things seem to be kind of tapering down a little bit uh, currently. But, Uh you know, we're we're still confident in that it's going to be a great year. It's just, is it going to be as good as the last two? Yeah. It's going to be hard to say. Today's episode is sponsored by Jewel360 Software. Jewel360 helps jewelry retailers manage all of the pieces of their business. It's great for managing repair work, tracking inventory in-store and online, and running all aspects of your store in a modern cloud-based solution. Jewel360 also has built-in tools for communicating with customers so you can keep them in the loop and coming back to your store. With the client book integration, you can take that one step further by integrating all of your clienteling work directly into your point of sale. With everything built into one system, it makes this process seamless and incredibly easy. Jewel360 does all this and more. For listeners of this podcast, Jewel360 is offering 25% off your startup costs. Click the link in the description or call 385-259-7029 to schedule a demo and redeem this offer. And now, back to the show. You know, it's a it's an interesting time because, um, you know, as the industry goes, it's been a great couple of years as well. Um, just just overall, um, it's been a very lucrative few years for for jewelers and jewelry retailers, and uh, it's it's interesting to look at because um, there's going to be two types of jewelers. I feel like that that come through this, and and tell me if I'm wrong here. I'd love to hear your opinion. Sure. But I think there's going to be two types of jewelers that come through this this period. There's going to be those that, that recognize the things that happened during this time to make things so successful, and they're going to work really hard at implementing those things and right. capitalizing on those things. Uh, and then there's going to be those who, who, who let this opportunity, I guess, uh, go to the side, right? They're right. going to be excited about the couple of years they've had really good, and then things will just go back to the status quo. Um, do, do you feel that is an accurate assessment or... I think when when you have a couple good years in a row, and uh, you you may feel the um, the want the need to take your foot off the gas pedal a little bit, but it, you you really can't. In my mm-hmm. own personal opinion, you can't. Um, if you do, I think you're wasting an opportunity. Um, you know, you you have the wheels rolling right now. You may as well keep them going, right? Um, yeah. Don't pull up to the stop sign. You know, this is one of those times where you roll through and you pick up mm-hmm. speed. Mm-hmm. Especially early on, you know, new, new shops that open early on, right? All, all they could hope for is more capital so they can grow. Right. Right. And so so right. this opportunity when when stores do have perhaps a little bit more capital than they normally do, um, you know, to, to use that to grow, to reinvest that back into the business, 
Um, that's a that's a great way to ensure that that you you continue this trend on as long as you can. Absolutely, absolutely. And by the way, before I'm not not advocating for breaking traffic laws. Don't do that by any means. <laughs> I think that's terrible. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's when you have the extra capital, reinvest it into your store, reinvest it into your employees. Um, those are the people that that make your world turn. Um, mm-hmm. Your clients make your world turn. If you can put it into advertising dollars and and do it, I I think that makes total sense. Yeah, awesome, awesome. I agree with you. What What are some things that you've done uh, technology wise in your store to help you stand out and to, uh, to to help you know when and what to buy and to you know increase those sales? Has there any been anything that stood out to you? Um, one thing we've done. The reports I get, I, I look at the numbers. Uh, it gives us the numbers for the past three years. Uh-huh. This is what we did on this day three years ago, two years ago, last year. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And what you're projected to do this year. Um, if you do that, great. If not, you know, something to strive for. Yeah. Um, you can make it up the next day. But yeah. uh, that's one of the, the, the things that I've, I have found beneficial technology-wise. Um as far as inventory management um, and just keeping up on your general sales numbers. It, it'll break it down into uh, uh, salespeople and, and um, what categories you're selling fast, you know, what vendors mm-hmm. you're selling fast. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think a lot of people don't replace those fast, fast sellers and you need to. Yeah. Um, now that's where you need to keep your stock, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, another thing technology wise, we, um, we use Stellar. Who doesn't? Okay. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Um, so Stellar's uh, uh, matrix program, the CAD program, um, uh-huh. the reason I bought this computer that I'm on, um, we uh, were able to, um, we're just now getting into custom design, uh, uh-huh. custom CAD design. Um, and we're using the matrix, uh, matrix, matrix gold program. Um, matrix gold is, uh, it's, it's mind blowing. Um, there's so many different things there. Actually, my uh, my brother in law Chris is in the store as well, uh-huh. uh, keeping it in the family, right? Uh huh. Um, that's right. He's our uh, our jeweler apprentice, um, so he's learning from custom, uh, custom Tom. Uh-huh. Um, uh huh. But as far as CAD goes, Chris is he's come so far in such a short time. It's it's really amazing. Um, he's created some things that I'm like, Chris, how'd you do that? Uh-huh. Um, CAD designed something new, uh, technology wise. Um, not last, not this year, uh, or this past year, the year before we completely revamped our outdoor, uh, led sign. Uh, we were just, uh, two colors, red and black kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, now we're full color. Um, we're able to put pictures out on the, um, the road, uh, the road sign. And it's, uh, it's been beneficial, brings people in. Um, yeah. Especially if you're so, so promotion driven, like you mentioned. Oh yeah. Um, that's gotta be a great way to do that. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's a few different technological things that we've done this past year that, um, um, have really helped us out, uh, and really, uh, really brought some people in. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. And you touched on on uh, two types of technology there that I think are really interesting. Because when when I think technology, I group them into two categories. Uh, you have you have the supporting technology, right? So those numbers that you can look at to understand how you're doing as a store. Um, you know, the best type of, of business owners, the best type of entrepreneurs, have been doing that for for a very very long time. Whether they've had technology to help them or not, right. you know, they're looking at those numbers. They're looking at how their stuff is selling. Um, and then the technology can come in and help you scale it, right? So they can help you um, do it faster, do it better, and do it more often. And then there's the the CAD program that you mentioned. Um, yep. And this is really interesting to me because there's the type of technology that lets you enter new markets. There's the type of technology that lets you do something you've never been able to do before. Um, and so that's really, really cool. And I'm glad you shared those two examples. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. W- what about like your team, your team in the store? 
Yeah. Um, you know, what are some things that you've learned? You know, I, I, I really like uh, retail just in general because uh, it's, it's so interesting how you can hire one staff member and learn something entirely new about how to run your business. Um, so, so what are some things that you've learned from your team or you've learned um, uh, from the rest of the employees there at the store? I, I learn something new about them every day. Um, everybody has their different habits. Um, and from the outside looking in, you see, um, or from the back room looking out, rather, um, I think that's a better way to put it. Um, you see everybody's different habits and, and you learn how to approach them. Um, there's, uh, um, a certain, I, I forgot the name of the report, but you can, you can have somebody take a personality test, I think. Oh yeah. Um, uh-huh. And you can, you can find out, um, what the best way is to approach that particular employee, um, that particular person. And, uh, we personally haven't done that at the store. I, I'm really kind of curious to see how it would go. Um, cause you know, you got your, your type A's and, 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 uh, the different ones, so on and so forth. But, um, you learn how each person sells and, and you learn their different skills and capabilities. Um, and, and teaching what you know to them, um, and watching them curtail it in to their own personal, um, presentation is pretty cool to see. Yeah. Playing to the strengths of your employees, I think yes. is what you're what you're getting to right there. Yes. Um, because if, if everyone is playing to their strength at the store, and if you can find a way that everyone is doing that way, uh, it's 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 yeah. the best way to for everyone to be working. Um, right. And that's where you'll see the most success. That's really really good. I like that you shared that. It's something yeah. we've actually done at our office too. Um, is is the personality uh, quiz and that that test? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is interesting to to learn exactly how your colleagues, you know, will respond to certain things or how they appro- like being talked to, uh, you know, about certain things and stuff. So that is, that's cool. I'm glad you shared that. Yeah. Yeah. Pleasure. All right. I've got one last question for you here before we wrap up. All right. What is something that everyone in the jewelry industry needs to start doing? Something they might not have started yet. That they need to start doing or start looking into lab grown diamonds, lab grown diamonds, lab grown diamonds. That's going to have um, a controversial reaction, I think. I, I, I would three years ago I would have agreed totally, hundred uh-huh, percent. Uh-huh. Um, now, if you're not doing it, you're you're being left behind. That boat has taken off, and and if you're not on it, it's going to be gone. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Lab grown has been so great uh, for our store. Uh-huh. Um, we have um, we've got quite a few diamonds in stock. I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll keep it simple like that. Sure. Um, but as far as lab grown goes, I, I think if you don't have a lab grown presence in your store, you're going to need one. Yeah. Wow. You're that's fantastic. One. That's I'm, I'm really glad that's what you shared. That's uh, uh, I'm, I'm excited to hear what people think of that. Um, and so this is, this is really good. I'm glad you shared that. You know, this, this past Christmas we had, um, we have our all of our lab grown diamond jewelry in a four foot showcase. Now we keep it separated from everything, um, uh, just to not muddy any sort of waters. Sure. Um, but there was uh, this one bracelet in particular. Um, over the last two years, we have sold thirty six of this one bracelet. Wow. Um, this is uh, ten carats, anywhere between eight ten. And 15 carats worth of lab grown diamonds. And we're selling it and, and making money on it. Yeah. That's uh, going back to your, your reports and the fast, fast sellers. I'd be crazy not to reorder that. Uh, and because we reordered it, we sold 36 of them. Wow. In the last two years of a, a bracelet that retails for uh, 69.95. Uh, yeah. For a 10, 10 carat, who can have yeah. ten carat worth of diamonds for for seven grand? I mean, that's yeah. it, it's crazy. Uh, but that's what lab grown's doing to our industry. Um, you're able to have that yeah. uh, the uh, uh, the diamond that is um, it's it's it has all the same chemical physical properties of a natural mine diamond, but it's less. It's less expensive. Yeah. And, and us it, as jewelers it, it can, can make more money on it. 
Exactly. And it opens up a new market for you, right? Yeah. Um, because it's not necessarily that you were losing out on a sale of a natural diamond for 10 carats. It's right. that now you're able to make this additional sale that you wouldn't have been able to before. Right. So that's, that's really interesting. I'm glad you shared that. Yeah. Um, C- Cody, as we're wrapping up, uh, anything else that you want to share with our, our listeners? As far as uh, uh, the, the jewelry industry goes, you know, keep plugging away. Keep those wheels turning. Um, I, I think we uh, we're in for a. It might be a little more challenging of a year, um, but you know we're we're all friends. Uh, if you're not a part of a buying group, join a buying group. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's uh, there's a few good ones out there. We belong to RJO. Um, RJO has been great. We've been a part of RJOs for 27 years. Wow. Uh, 27 years of, uh, of uh, great service, uh, great vendors, and um, you know we're happy to be a part of that family. And it really is a family. Yeah. Um, so anyways, um, being a part of a buying group is something that I would recommend. Great. Well, hey, we appreciate you having, on, having you on, Cody. Um, we'll, uh, we'll be in touch. Hey, sounds great, Nick. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Master Stones podcast. Be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Leave a rating or review to let us know what you think. For more interviews with business owners, visit jewel360.com slash interviews, where you'll find transcripts, show notes, and videos for all of our episodes.